Hello and thank you for watching Tools, the online orations for learning through seminars in anesthesia and critical care. In this edition, we are discussing rationale of choice of inotropes and vasopressors in intensive care. Let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Sanish from Department of Anesthesia and Intensive Care Unit, Sultan Qaboos University Hospital, Muscat. The topic inotropes and vasopressors brings to mind a lot of drugs, their pharmacology, a lot of concepts, physiology, pathophysiology, controversies and so on and so forth. However, in this lecture I am trying to present a simplified outline so that the beginners or residents can catch up with the topic. Before we envisage starting an anotrope or a vasopressor, we should be clear about some basic terminologies like shock, cardiac output, heart rate, systemic vascular resistance, preload, afterload, etc. We should know about our patient, the clinical features, pathophysiology, monitoring requirements and familiarity with equipments and drugs. A few fundamental concepts. Your patient's volume status should be optimized before instituting inotropes or vasopressors. Most drugs being considered here may act on many receptors, that is one drug many receptors. You should be able to recognize the effects of a drug as a direct or reflex action. For example, vasodilators and vasoconstrictors lack primary cardiac effects but still indirect cardiac effects occur due to sympathetic reflexes. Again, vasoactive drugs display a non-linear dose response whereby the incremental clinical response achieved with dose titration declines in higher doses. Let us see what happens in shock. The circulatory shock represents a failure of the cardiovascular system to provide adequate tissue perfusion and oxygen delivery to maintain normal cellular metabolism. It can culminate in multi-organ dysfunction and death. Exploring the hemodynamics in shock, hypotension occurs due to low systemic vascular resistance, you know SVR as a proxy for arteriolar tone and bar or insufficient cardiac output. Patients may display inadequate cardiac output with compensatory vasoconstriction and raised systemic vascular resistance as in cold shock or inadequate systemic vascular resistance from pathological vasodilatation with compensatory elevated cardiac output as it happens in warm shock. Fluid resuscitation may convert a patient with sepsis from cold shock to warm shock with subsequent development of myocardial dysfunction potentially reverting the patient back to cold shock. Now let's start planning our strategy. We know where the adrenergic receptors are located. Beta 1 receptors lead to inotropy that is cardiac contractility, chronotropy heart rate changes. Beta 2 leads to vasodilatation and alpha 1 receptors cause vasoconstriction. Remember we are still left with the dopamine receptors and vasopressin V1 receptors. Some of the new drugs directly influence the intracellular cyclic AMP levels to produce their effects. Here I am trying to organize some of our drugs depending on their affinity for alpha and beta adrenergic receptors. Those with alpha actions should be placed on the left hand side of your screen and those with beta actions to go towards the right hand side. First I am placing epinephrine in the middle as a physiological agonist action on both alpha and beta receptors. Next phenylephrine which has strong alpha affinity is placed on the extreme left hand side. Dobutamin has a predominant beta 1 action and slight beta 2 as well, hence placed to the right side. However, isoproterenol, 
which has exclusive beta action should be placed further to the right side. Coming to dopamine, in low doses it acts on dopamine receptors and on high doses its action shifts to alpha adrenergic ones causing vasoconstriction. Norepinephrine has predominant alpha action and hence let's place it next to phenylephrine very close to it. A recent article in the journal Cardiovascular Pharmacology Core Review, the authors proposed a new classification of massive active drugs used in shock based on their direct effects on the vascular tone, that is vasoconstriction or vasodilatation, and their direct effects on the heart, that is presence or absence of positive inotropic effects. Those with direct inotropic effects are inotropes and those producing vasoconstriction are vasopressors. Now let us see the crossover by both classifications. Those inotropes with vasopressor action are inoconstrictors, examples being norepinephrine, epinephrine, dopamine. Those inotropes with vasodilation action are inodilators like dobutamine, milrinone. Those vasopressors with no positive direct inotropic effects are vasoconstrictors like phenylephrine, vasopressin. Remember, they can produce indirect cardiac effects due to sympathetic reflexes. The last category vasodilators are those without any positive direct inotropic effects and they mainly reduce systemic vascular resistance. Now let us plot a graph with an x-axis showing positive inotropy and y-axis reflecting vasoconstriction effect along the positive axis and vasodilatation as we go downwards from the baseline. The next step is to attempt to place the vasoactive agents depending on their effects. First let me pick up norepinephrine. Norepinephrine has uh, more of alpha adrenergic action leading to high vasoconstriction placing it upwards and mild inotropic effect placing it a bit towards the right side as well. How about epinephrine or dopamine? In low dose they have positive inotropic action and minimal increase in systemic vascular resistance and hence they are placed here. Suppose you go to high dose dopamine due to increased alpha action it is its place moves upwards with not much increase in inotropy to move towards the right side. What happens with the high dose epinephrine? The high dose gives you higher vasoconstriction and inotropy, however there is more risk of tachyarrhythmias. Where do you place phenylephrine? It has severe vasoconstriction action without any direct inotropic action, hence it is placed on the y-axis higher up. Vasopressin is also a severe vasoconstrictor without direct inotropic action acting through V1 receptors. Dobutamine has predominant beta 1 action leading to strong inotropy hence placed towards the right. However, it causes vasodilatation acting through beta 2 receptors and hence positioned in the lower half of the plot. For completion sake, I am plotting a pure vasodilator nitroprusside in the negative y-axis further down. This is the conventional table depicting the degree of affinity to adrenergic receptors. You may notice that vasopressin acts through V1 receptors shown as 4 plus like. Similar case with milrinone, the ionodilator which produces its hemodynamic effects through phosphodiesterase 3 inhibition causing B1-like and B2-like actions. Now let us gear up to the core theme of this lecture. How do I make my decision or choice regarding inotrope or vasopressor in the intensive care unit? <coughs> Conventionally we used to discuss each agents that is their receptor affinity and where and where not to be used regard to each agent. Here we are going to choose our agent depending on what effect we require to combat the pathophysiological changes. 
when we choose a vasopressor our target is to restore adequate blood pressure however one needs to remember that blood pressure does not always translate to blood flow at the tissue level when we choose an inotrope we are trying to increase the cardiac output again it is usually challenging to determine whether cardiac output is adequate in patients with shock the basic concepts described so far helps in appropriate selection of vasoactive agents in various pathophysiologic changes when there is hypotension perfusion pressure gets compromised tissue hyperperfusion may also result from abnormal shunting of blood flow within organs cellular alterations resulting in inability to use delivered substrate appropriately may also occur down regulation or desensitization of adrenergic receptors is another concern while dealing with a shock scenario if you look up to your drugs to produce the desired effects when the targeted receptors may be rendered ineffective or down regulated let's move ahead to our uh, designated job the initial step should be to correct the volume status which means fluid resuscitation when your patient is volume depleted remember the classical aphorism fill the vascular tree and then squeeze it similarly in congestive heart failure one needs to start on diuretics to reduce the preload institute required monitors to make out actual clinical parameters now think about vasopressors or inotropes our objective is to restore effective tissue perfusion and normalize cellular metabolism regarding decision making you decide which drug works depending on clinical scenarios and monitored parameters then if you are not achieving your targets you would consider titrating the dose or consider adding another agent so as to minimize the adverse effect aiming for catecholamine sparing your calls of treatment are dictated by pathophysiology and you always refer to the best available clinical evidence from literature i shall illustrate these concepts with the four clinical scenarios in the next edition coming up as part 2 of this lecture so what are the take home messages the process of choosing a vasoactive agent in intensive care unit involves a discussion more about the effects than about the agents the plot of different agents on the basis of inotropy or vasoconstriction also helps in having a visual impression looking forward to your company in part 2 signing off for now thank you from sanish